Hello everyone, this is Amanda and this is my weekly video. I definitely think we went over some interesting topics this week and I'm going to begin my video by going over the important terms. The first one that I have is the Local Emergency Management Agency, which is the community agency responsible for emergency management for particular areas. These are the people that are developing plans in these areas for things such as hazard vulnerability analysis, emergency preparedness, recovery preparedness, and community hazard education. The next term is hazard exposure or community vulnerability. This is the level of hazard adjustment that is increased due to a recent frequent or severe disaster impact. The disaster subculture is when people are beginning to adopt routinized patterns of disaster behaviors. The next part is the emergency management process, which has a couple parts to it, such as planning activities. These could be things like the department trainings, the reviews with the officials, the interdepartmental task force, the community resource assistance, the vulnerability analysis, the next part of the emergency planning process is the teen climate department. This is developing patterns of collective beliefs communicated to other members. The next part of the emergency planning process would be the situation analysis, which has a couple parts itself, which is the hazard exposure analysis, the physical vulnerability analysis, the social vulnerability analysis, the evaluation of hazard adjustments, and the capability analysis. The next part is the strategic choice. This has some parts as well, which is things like the resource building, the emergency resources, elite representation, um, computation, audience, and that's it. The next part that I wanted to go over, which is the interorganizational orientation. This once again has multiple parts to it, such as maintenance, which are those acquiring and maintaining human, material, and financial resources. The next being the disaster expert. This is the one developing knowledge and skill about the hazard agent. The abstract planner is the one constructing the contingency plans. The military, which develops a well-defined hierarchy organization. The administrative staff to develop the material knowledge and skill. The disaster simulation forces those to rehearse of disaster planning through drills and exercises and derived political power of course is representatives of the jurisdiction and another being an interpersonal broker which establishes contacts among all the emergency organizations and the last person would be the community educator this is the one helping to overcome community differences through hazard awareness programs. Clearly, all these people are very important, part of a bigger team overall. And another, the last thing that I wanted to talk about, well not the last thing, but the last part of the concepts that I wanted to talk about were like all those different articles that had multiple different topics that I thought were very interesting, such as that women are more likely than men to be injured or die from disasters, but that in some cases men do have a higher mortality rate, which could just be due to the riskier disasters, such as because they believe that they are the stronger sex and that they don't need protection and as men that they need to play like that hero heroic role, like they need to go run into a burning building. They need to jump into the flooded water and help people. And that men are more likely to do this than women. Another thing that I thought was interesting from the packets 
and because I work in mental health, I thought this was definitely interesting that PTSD couldn't follow, fo could follow after a natural disaster. It kind of makes sense. But most people think PTSD is after people have been like abused or been to war. Not really after a natural disaster, but it does, it makes sense that someone would become really depressed and traumatized after like losing their home or losing their job, all their personal belongings and such. And this doesn't have to show up right away either. It could show weeks, months, even years after it happened. And there could be stressors that could cause this to come up, such as like heavy rain and stuff like that, uh, that would remind them of their experience. I freaking my kitten right there. <laughs> well, I pointed on my foot. <laughs> um, going along with mental health, that substance abuse increases after these natural disasters, which I also found very interesting. Another thing that I was actually pretty surprised about was domestic violence increases following disasters. But it's more so thought that the perpetrators may feel like a loss of control, which is why they turn to gain some control in any way possible, which results in abusive behavior in the relationship. Um, another thing that I thought that I do think about, but I don't know how much other people think about this, is you should really have disaster preparedness for not only yourself, but for your pet. Because I know a lot of times we think about, like, when you plan for, like, your fire emergency where you're going to go and things like that, you think about what you're going to do for yourself, but you don't think about what you would do for your pet, which I thought was really interesting. And definitely is a valid point that we should consider what we would do for them, too. The muddiest point would just... It's not that it didn't make sense, but something that really blew my mind was the increase in domestic violence and assault. Both topics are pretty bad, domestic violence and um, assault. And then putting that together with a natural disaster, I just think that it would increase someone's mental health extremely, having to mix all these different things. And it just, I don't know why. I think it just blows my mind that people would resort to some things like that after. Um, and then for my question for an open discussion, it would just be, why do you think that women are known to die or be injured more often than men during disasters, even though men are seen as doing riskier or heroic things at the time of a disaster so yeah this is my video and I definitely think we went over some interesting topics and I hope we have some more interesting topics coming out